lock in and buckle up because you're in for another creepy and scary TikTok reaction video. I'm Jesky Chuck, and on these dark waters, you got to keep your head on a swivel because you don't know what's going to come at you. So let's get into it. In that's what an explorer found right ancient Egyptian tombs inside the Grand Canyon. That's what an explorer found right before the government closed the area off from the public. Way back in 1909, the Arizona Gazette reported a story of a miner, G.E. Kincaid, looking for gold in the Grand Canyon. While journeying down the river, he came across what looked like steps carved into the canyon side, so he decides to check it out. The steps he claimed were perfectly carved, not a natural formation, and as he approached the top, he came across a man-made cave entrance, which do exist all around the Grand Canyon, but this one was different. He went inside, turned on his light, and saw tunnels chiseled with perfect architecture and more branching paths deeper inside. He kept going until he comes across an enormous room several hundred feet long. In the middle stood a giant statue of what looked like Buddha holding lotus flowers in each hand. Now Buddha has nothing to do with ancient Egypt, which actually makes this more of a mind trip, but we're getting there, I promise. This looks like it was an ancient underground city, which actually exists all around the world in places like Darren Kuyu in Turkey. Kincaid was amped. This gotta be the discovery of the century, so of course he leaves and asks for funding to explore more from the Smithsonian. The world leading museum research and education institute, the gatekeeper of archaeological findings, made by the US government, who gladly agree. They send a team of scientists and miners, led by S.A. Jordan, to fully excavate this mind-blowing discovery. With this team back in the expedition, Kincaid goes back to the caves and realized he barely scratched the surface. He left extremely detailed journal entries describing the whole excavation, with hallways up to 12 feet wide and large oval doorways throughout the underground complex. During this excavation, they find full-size rooms which appear to have been made for dining, winding halls with detailed architecture, and artifacts like pottery, urns, and to their surprise, copper tools and swords along with rooms built for metalwork. All signs of an ancient civilization far more advanced than what should have been here at the time. But then they find this, Egyptian hieroglyphs carved and painted on the walls and stone tablets with similar hieroglyphs engraved. And then finally, what appeared to be a crypt filled with little cubby holes in the walls, each containing mummies of giant human humanoids, some even being reported as reptilian looking. Yeah, Egyptian tombs in the Grand Canyon. They call this complex the Citadel, and by the end of their expedition, hundreds of rooms were discovered, estimated to house up to 50,000 people. They determined that, of course, this must be the remains of an advanced civilization that were here before the natives, and somehow brought the knowledge of the ancient Egyptians from the other side of the world into the Americas. G.E. Kincaid and S.A. Jordan presented their Egyptian hypothesis to the Smithsonian, who obviously did not like the sound of that and denied further excavation. <sighs> Egyptian hieroglyphs spotted outside of Egypt absolute nonsense, right? Maybe, but this isn't the only time that such a claim was made. Like, the Gosford hieroglyphs carved into rock in Australia, which look almost identical to that of the Egyptians. It's hard to tell exactly how old they are, but of course they're labeled a hoax. Someone else carved them here a few years ago to trick the world, or the written language of the Mi'kmaq, a Native American tribe that lived along the Atlantic coast, which shares a baffling number of similarities with Egyptian hieroglyphs, two cultures that allegedly had no contact among each other. This one was just a coincidence, of course. Just like the Fuente Magna found in Bolivia with Proto-Sumerian cuneiform script writing on it. That's ancient Mesopotamian writing uncovered in South America. So artifacts of ancient Middle Eastern civilizations found in the Americas have happened, but we just ignore them. To this day, the Smithsonian denies this expedition in the Grand Canyon ever happened. And the stories of the explorers are of course deemed a hoax. So is any of this real? The native indigenous people seem to think so. Native American tribes like the Navajo, Zuni, Acoma Pueblo have legends of a race that existed there before them. Even citing the Grand Canyon Canyon specifically as the place where the first people emerged from. These myths all speak of either a race of reptilians, yes, we're in lizard people territory now, or giants that civilized the area, building underground cities to protect themselves. The Hopi tribe even have a story about a sky god who, after a series of cataclysms, emerged from a moving star and took the tribe to underground caves in the Grand Canyon region to protect them. The Havasupai people believe the canyon is the home of the Supai, the spirit of their ancestors. The Piute culture got the legend of the Havmusufs, who also lived in an underground city and had silver tubes that shot lightning that could end a man's life and silver canoes in the sky, which all line up perfectly with the flood myths, not to mention UFO sightings, around the world where godlike beings descend from the sky and gift civilization to humanity. And is exactly why the Smithsonian cringes at the thought of admitting to this. Because it would imply that cultures like the ancient Egyptians had overseas contact with the Americas, completely destroying their current narrative of isolationism which states that groups of humans evolved independently of each other all around the world. Today, this section of the Grand Canyon has some interesting official 
official names for the formations found here, like the Tower of Set, Horus, Isis Temple, Ra, the Cheops Pyramid, all Egyptian names, and these formations have the weirdest, most interesting shapes unlike those found in any other canyon. Alright, enough yapping. Where is this cave, and can't we just go to it today to prove this once and for all? Really thought it was that easy, huh? The exact area where the Citadel would be found has, of course, been marked off-limits by the government. The Grand Canyon has hundreds of man-made caves all over it that are confirmed real, with only 30 that have been officially mapped out, some of which are sealed with steel gates for safety. When amateur explorers tried checking out the region, planes and helicopters would appear out of nowhere over areas designated as no-fly zones, some claiming they can even spot remnants of pyramids and other ancient structures in the cliffs of the canyon, implying the Grand Canyon may actually be the site of a bustling ancient city. Rumors of ancient Egyptian remains and underground cities in the Grand Canyon, government closes the area off, and then planes and drones are found scouting the area. Are they hiding something from us, or am I just going to get stitched into another Mr. Know-It-All debunking video? That's what we need to be working on on these waters. The Grand Canyon. Them lizard people. That civilizations. What about the native stories? Aligning up everything with Gilgamesh and the Noah. Everything seems to be lining up. This is what I'm talking about now. This is the waters we need to be diving on. What's going on with the Grand Canyon? Your thoughts below. Jump in the comments and tell me what you know about the Grand Canyon right now. We need to figure this out. We're going to dive... We're going to dive even deeper on these waters about the Grand Canyon and the pyramids. You got to keep your head out here on a swivel. I have proof that the Red Sea crossing happened. Like proof, not just artifacts on the bottom. We had those. We had chariot wheels in the bottom of the Red Sea. We had all these cool little artifacts. But the coolest thing that I saw is the shoreline. If you've ever watched the Ten Commandments movie, they have that big pillar of fire that came down. That's mentioned in the Bible, this pillar of fire. I just pictured these flames coming down. But when you go to that shoreline where, where it's documented to happen, the entire shoreline is melted sand. And it takes about 3,000 degrees or more to melt that sand. And it's evenly melted. You can almost see like footprints. There are stones infused in this melted sand. This is amazing. You don't hear about it. If it was a proof of evolution, it would be in every single textbook. But it's a proof that there was an exodus, like we're having today. You're talking about the exodus, people leaving the cities. It's Did you guys hear about that? The sand's burning? Oh, I'm going to have to make an out cold video. I'm going to have to bunch all that together. And it's going to be, man, that video is going to be out cold. It might be two hours long, but it's going to happen. Egypt has 118 pyramids, but did you know that America has over 2,000? This conspiracy theory is guaranteed to blow your mind. It states that the Grand Canyon is a path to Egypt, and that's because there's pyramids, hieroglyphics, mummies, and tons of other Egyptian artifacts were found, and all the areas that are marked off actually mimic Orion's belt and all the main points are named after Egyptian gods. And some of the biggest pyramids around the world and in the United States are actually hidden under mountains. Go ahead, look it up. And the majority of the pyramids really start picking up along the eastern part of America, which according to this map of what America really is, that's all ancient Mesopotamia and Babylon, which makes sense why you find all these ancient hidden civilizations in the eastern parts of America. And why you have all these obelisks because America is the real Egypt and they've just been lying to you. What do you think? This is Ames Monument, found in Beaufort, Wyoming. This structure is 60 feet tall, made out of pure granite. They say it was made as a monument to the Ames brothers who were major financers of the Transcontinental Railroad. 
said to be built in 1869 with no power tools and no way to move these type of granite blocks. Cap. People in that area know that monument was there before 1869. And like the pyramids of Egypt and Central America, Ames Monument also contains passageways and hollow spaces. Just like the pyramids of Egypt and South America, this pyramid has passageways to enter. That further lets me know someone stayed in this pyramid at one point of time. And the face on this monument, the granite does not match the original granite that further lets me know that face was put on this structure. Let's keep going. It is hollow uh, to uh, save labor and materials. In October of 2010, under the direction of the state of Wyoming, skilled masons opened up one of the narrow passageways into the structure and allowed architects to map out its interior. It was just a real high point in my life, that moment of getting in there and standing up and looking around. To walk around in it, there's like a six-foot passage that goes around the interior of the pyramid around a central uh, mass. And the stones that are uh, in there uh, kind of hang out and jut out, and, and uh, they're very crude, and the... the there's no uh, floor uh, to speak of. Uh, it goes up and down, and uh, at the corners on the interior are some columns that you can go through, and in one corner there is uh, carved out sort of a bigger uh, room-like. And uh, so there may have been gatherings in there with, of the workers. <laughs> gatherings of the workers inside of the pyramid, huh? Cap. Look at these stones on this pyramid. They didn't build it. We know the truth now. Why are they trying to cover up these pyramids? Huh? If there's, if there's pyramids all over America, what are they trying to hide? I'm just now figuring this out. What is going on? What are they trying to hide? Your thoughts below. We're diving in deeper on these. I see with this one, we got to be careful, man. Y'all can say what y'all want. Believe what y'all want. But make sure you got that sword and shield. Real ones know what I'm talking about. Let's go. So the ancient Egypt, the original one. Not America. Map of ancient pyramid civilizations and prehistoric communities. All right, now if you look at this map, it is a map of modern day America. And look at all the pyramids in America. Just look at it. I'm gonna get into it later. Up in uh, Idaho camping, would you look at this? I think I found an ancient map. Because that's a pyramid like. Not gonna uh, explore it this weekend, but gonna come back up here. We gonna get to that spot. Cause that's looking really, uh. It's like a nipple. While searching on Google Earth, I came across what looked to be a pyramid. But this wasn't in Egypt. This was in the middle of nowhere, Wyoming, miles from the nearest town or civilization. So I had to go check it out for myself, and I drove several hours to go find out what this was. I just found the coordinates from Google Earth. There's a pyramid here in the middle of the high plains of Wyoming. What in the world is this? It's huge. It's so windy. It's sucking the air around my lungs. So apparently this was designed by a famous architect in the late 1800s named H.H. H. Richardson, and it was dedicated as a monument to the Ames brothers. I don't know what you all think, but this looks a little peculiar to me. A pyramid in the middle of the high plains of Wyoming. What do you all think it's real? 
think the ancient civilizations built that one. They built that pyramid and they're trying to cover it up by slapping that face on it. Began to explore and found massive. That's why all geologists was, was riding down the Grand Canyon, the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon and saw these caves and began to explore and found massive hieroglyphs, sarcophagus, mummies, and a, a chain way of a wagon wheel spoke that had roads going out as you went into this cave and went deeper down into it. Hmm. Yeah, there are portals. And, yeah. and in Arizona, they have what's called South Mountain and God's Gateway. And Arizona is a very important part because the Vatican has an observatory with the only binocular telescope looking through a golden binocular telescope and the telescope is called the Lucifer. In uh, in Arizona? Yes. On a sacred mountain of the indigenous people. And they do a lot of stuff on these sacred mountains, man. man. Because they know it's portals and it's aligned with the heavens. This is why we, we knew to be in certain places at certain times of a season. And that these alignments bring down energy. And if you know how to use your energy, just like the Pyramid of Giza, it's not a tomb. It was a transport station. In which you, the way that the outside of the pyramid was built, covered with limestone and a gold cap on the top, the, the bim bim stump. When you go inside in the king's chamber and the queen's chamber, there was a sarcophagus. <laughs> and the way in which the granite, remember I said, Georgia is the granite capital. Mm -hmm. When you take that granite and you pitch it in certain ways to where you get acoustics, to where when you go into a mantra and you put that person into a, a, a crystal granite, sarcophagus and you began to transport through the mantras of vibration his spirit can travel back into the cosmos or it can bring people into what we call a wormhole that's why when they did when when uh roddenberry did the thing of star trek he had to start with with the with the with the person who talks to the universe lieutenant oru mm. the black woman mm -hmm. talks to the universe dang what was they really doing inside those pyramids? He said, I never seen Stargate, man. I might have to go back and watch it. Is that what he said? He was talking about Stargate, the black woman that was talking to the universe. I hate to go back and figure it out. Yeah, you got bust. That that works. Okay. I gotta I gotta go back and figure out what he was talking about but yeah i need to watch that season look at the pyramid over there there's pyramids everywhere whether you realize it or not there's like three of them i can see from my house well in my area not exactly from my house Damn. did you know that ancient america had that was definitely that pyramid they were looking at. That was definitely one. It's a map of, as it being written in the Old Testament. It's a map of the Old Testament, the land of the of of of, of Israel, also the land of Egypt. Now this, some what we call some uh, Hebrews actually have found this. They got it, I guess, from a whole land, and they had this map up on their site. And guess what happened? They took their channel down. Let me go ahead and read to you. The America is the Old World, Volume 2. This is a book, The America is the Old World, Volume 2. You can get this on Amazon. It says here in Figure 3, the Old Testament map of ancient America shows you that Lower Mesopotamia, or Lower Egypt, Babylon, Israel, Jerusalem, and Moab are all on this map. Ancient Mesopotamia was in the Americas because Ameru was a Sumerian Akkadian god of the Amorites aka mound builders now you know you go through st louis you go through tennessee you go through even in georgia there were mounds that they completely tore down those were the ancient people who had copper colored skin those were their grave sites let me keep reading the marrow which is saw the Mongol moors the oldest indigenous people in the world according to the united nations now let us see if we can tie the sumerian god Ameru to the western serpent or the dragon to the ancient tribe of the people of the americas 
Well, the Amaru, Wichita, or the Dihamandi Moors are the oldest indigenous people on the planet, according to the United Nations. The original name of America was Amaru, according to Webster's 1936 Universal Dictionary. The word American is defined as an aboriginal or one of various copper-colored natives found in American continents by the Europeans. The original application of the name was Ameru before it was America. So the people that were here were copper-colored just like Christ. Because these people fell because of their sins and worshiping snake gods, gods, dragon gods, they went away from the original God, the first commandment, thou shalt not have any other gods before me. Genesis 1. The original American Amaru, according to Webster's Dictionary, the American is defined as Aboriginal, one of the various copper-colored natives found in the American continents of Europe. The original application of the name Amaru, end quote, is derived from the point of Amaru, Westerner serpent god, which makes sense because the worship of the serpent dragon, come on, ancestors, which makes sense because of the worship of the serpent dragon, Kalanadi ancestry and Chakara alignment, was chiefly a symbol in the Americas. The flag of Mexico is the eagle, the phoenix, killing the serpent and the dragon. Mexico, a Mexican, Omnac, Old Mexican, was part of Wichita, Washa, Washita, ex Mur Empire of Mexico, used to cover South Central and North America. Mexico used to extend all the way up into Canada. Careful, these tech creepy and scary TikToks might just change your whole reality. And if you're asking me, America's definitely Egypt now. It makes sense. They was all over. They were all, if you ask me, America's Egypt and the original people was all over. They had the technology to turn these pyramids into portals. And that's how they were transferring around. Maybe I don't know for entertainment purposes only. That's where I'm at. They can't hide the pyramids. It's so many pyramids, they can't get rid of all of them. It's all over the United States. I see that now. These pyramids are all across the Americas, United States, and probably some up in Canada. They're everywhere. What's these boys charging stations? What are they portals now? We need to start busting these open and get inside. Connect these mercury rectifiers up here and get these boys beaming again. He, he hit the nail on the head. I'm convinced. Conspiracy theory is guaranteed to blow your mind. It states that the Grand Canyon is a path to Egypt, and that's because there's pyramids, hieroglyphics, mummies, and tons of other Egyptian artifacts were found. And all the areas that are marked off actually mimic Orion's belt. And all the main points are named after Egyptian gods. And some of the biggest pyramids around the world and in the United States are actually hidden under mountains. Go ahead, look it up. The majority of the pyramids really start picking up along the eastern part of America. Which according to this map of what America really is, that's all ancient Mesopotamia and Babylon. Which makes sense why you find all these ancient hidden civilizations in the eastern parts of America. And why you have all these obelisks because America's the real Egypt, and they've just been lying to you. What do you think? That dollar bill hits a lot harder now, don't it?
They got that dollar bill and what's on that dollar bill, the pyramid. I was wondering, why do they have that pyramid on there my whole life? I wonder, why do they have this? Hold on. My whole life, I wondered, why do they have this pyramid on the back of this dollar bill? What does this pyramid have to do with it? Now it makes sense. It makes completely sense why the dollar bill is on the why the pyramids on the back of the dollar bill, y'all. Damn. That's why these waters, these dark waters, man, you got to lock in, buckle up, make sure your head is on a swivel out here. It is real. Now, not only are we looking for the ancient Tartarian buildings everywhere we go, now every single mountain could be potentially buried and have a pyramid under the boy. Man, our eyes are open, man. I need to take these Dicinian boys off, man. This I'm, I'm seeing too much. Got it. This thing is massive and it's over 4,000 years old. Oh, but we do have a pyramid bigger than that and nobody's talking about it. Got it. This thing is massive and it's over 4,000 years old. Oh, but we do have a pyramid bigger than that and nobody's talking about it. The Great Pyramid of Giza is peanuts against the buried pyramid of the sun in Bosnia and you will not believe what they found there. In 2005, archaeologist Dr. Samir Osmanijic realized, hey, this hill in the small Bosnian city of Visoko is oddly shaped like a pyramid. And shaped like a pyramid? was an understatement. This hill has virtually every characteristic of a real pyramid and we continue to ignore it. To start, it has four triangular sides. That's it. Pyramid confirmed. We're done. Joking, but it's got even great slopes and corners that connect perfectly under the foliage, along with an apex at the very top, the exact shape of a pyramid, but oh, it don't end there, Johnny boy. It's also perfectly aligned to the cardinal directions, north, east, south, and west, much like Giza. In fact, this one is even more aligned to true north than Giza, being only one three hundredths of a degree off from perfect north, whereas Giza is two sixtieths of a degree off. They even took EMF, electromagnetic frequency readers, to the top and saw readings of 60 times more of what is normally expected on Earth. Another phenomenon that tends to occur at the pyramids, and the reason why is so mind-baffling that we'll have to save that for a future video. This hill was aptly named the Bosnian pyramid of the sun the first pyramid of its kind in europe taller than the great pyramid of giza and even bigger than the biggest pyramid of the world cholula in mexico with four other smaller hills around it that are also suspected to be pyramids or some other structures as is usually the case at these ancient sites sure it might just look like a hill covered in trees but have a look at what the pyramid of the sun in teotihuacan mexico looked like before it was excavated and after same with machu picchu and after and chichen itza and after. Any ancient site that isn't in a desert is typically covered with overgrowth and the Bosnian pyramid is looking a lot like that before stage. And just have a look at these drone shots and tell me these formations look natural to you. So Dr. Osmanigic began the excavations and now get this, radiocarbon analysis taken from the rocks hidden beneath the vegetation revealed that this pyramid would be over 35,000 years old. The oldest pyramid in the world by a long shot, over 30,000 years older than Giza. During a time in which traditional history claims only tribes and cavemen incapable of erecting such monuments roamed the earth far before any civilizations began to form or so we think for reference here's a timeline of all major ancient civilizations and structures built around the world and here is where the bosnian pyramid would stand in that timeline excavations also revealed huge blocks of seven tons each stacked with geopolymer binding which is an ancient type of cement and perfect placement along with perfectly landscaped terraces and other obvious architectural design but oh no these are all natural note that this was all uncovered up to a meter underground, as would be expected of a pyramid over 35,000 years old. And of course, the archaeological gatekeepers of the world insisted this is just coincidental. With some even going as far as saying Dr. Osmanigic purposely placed these carved stones here to deceive the public. And famed Egyptologist Zahi Hawass, who oversees most of the Egyptian pyramid investigations, even petitioning the Bosnian government to stop these excavations. Within hours of this international discovery, the story is swept under the rug and labeled a hoax. Well, over 50 archaeologists around the 
world remained optimistic and actually joined Osmanagic's work in Bosnia, with virtually every single one of them who actually saw it in person confirming that nature could not have formed these hills. Further studies revealing an entire underground tunnel system in the area, the longest subterranean complex of any pyramid in the world. Inside these tunnels, large stone blocks were found that clearly seemed to be artificially created and placed. Other artifacts like this giant round stone that no one can explain and a whole bunch of other smaller ancient trinkets, statues, and even what appears to be a map carved into stone were all found around the Bosnian Valley of Pyramids, all dismissed as irrelevant or flat out ignored by mainstream archaeology. Even the peak of the Sun Pyramid forms a perfect triangle with the peaks of the nearby hills, dubbed the Pyramids of the Moon and the Dragon. Another crazy coincidence, right? After much pushback, the government actually did grant Osmanagic the right to continue excavations. But with no official funding, the entire project depends on donations and volunteer work. These excavations are still going on, but after tourism to Bosnia slowed down the last couple of years, progress on these pyramids have as well. As with anything, you could probably rationalize a completely valid reason for each of these discoveries, and maybe it really is somehow just a hill, so you think we're tweaking on this one, or are we onto something? Who's ready to get digging? La Alright y'all, lock in and buckle up, cause we're headed to Bosnia. We gotta uncover that mountain. We gotta activate that boy. That's just another portal location. We could this is, this is hit. You know what I'm saying? That's what we on now. These pyramids is everywhere. They said it that they got way more pyramids in America than they do in actually around Egypt, Africa. Let's go. Lost City. Amateurs claim to have found 1,200-year-old underwater city with pyramids and energy field off the U.S. coast. Oh, my goodness. Let's get into it. So, this 1,200-year-old city is off the coast of New Orleans in Mississippi. Let's read this. What's down there? Hundreds of buildings that are covered with sand and slits that are geologically related to the Great Pyramids of Giza. So they basically connecting these pyramids with the Pyramids of Giza. They didn't talk too much about the energy field, and we know why. But let's watch the video and see what dude got to say about the pyramids he found. Discovered the ruins of an ancient civilization off the coast of St. Bernard Parish. He claims there are large mounds underwater that may have once been the site of a lost city thousands of years ago. Paul Murphy reports local fishermen have long talked about strange and unexplained things happening in that area. Mm-hmm. Them pyramids. The Chandelier Islands are a chain of uninhabited barrier this islands located in the Gulf of Mexico, 50 miles east of New Orleans. But 12,000 years ago, before a dramatic sea level rise at the end of the last ice age, this area may have been dry land. Three different searches. Our ancestors was Retired there. architect and amateur archaeologist George Gillet believes the site, now underwater, was once home to an ancient civilization. He dubbed the city Crescentus. What's down there is hundreds of buildings that are covered with sand and silt and that are geographically related to the Great Pyramid of Giza. Come on now. Giza so is when a we city say in Egypt, Egypt is over here. Where ancient pyramids in the when we say are Egypt located. is over here. Jalay claims to have found mysterious mounds of granite under Chandelier Sound. Granite is not native to Louisiana or Mississippi. Somebody floated a uh, billion stones down the Mississippi River. A and billion stones. Outside of what would later be from New Orleans. Egypt was in America too. Let me know what y'all think about them finding pyramids in New Orleans in the comments. Like and follow for more wisdom and stay tuned. So the ancient Egypt, the original one, not the one that we know of today, is actually in America. But did you know that there's more pyramids in North America than there are in Egypt? Glyphics. They found tools. The Listen Egypt, up. The original one, not the What if I told you guys that part of the ancient... Put in the comments below what you guys think about the pyramids being in America and America being in the original Egypt. This is all mind baffling. These are live reactions. So I'm still processing this while I'm watching new videos. So it's 
my neurons are frying are firing their best i'm doing my best here but just know that these are live reactions so as i'm watching more and more videos it's like man this is this is it you know what i'm saying so it's still settling in wow Ancient Egyptian Empire was in the America, then I'd say you're full of shit. Fact number one, our national parks. Let's take a look at places like the Grand Canyon. Sweet baby Jesus. Here he's trying to convince you that the Isis temple feature at the Grand Canyon was- Question of the day. How come all these places called Egypt, right? And all the places called Cairo is in the same exact spot, right? With these pyramids, question of the day. How come all these places called Egypt, right? And all the places called Cairo is in the same exact spot, right? With these pyramids exactly in the same spot. Can somebody please, because... Three coincidences? Come on, three coincidences? Come on, bro. We're not just going to play stupid. Can anybody tell me today about this so-called mystery? And while you answering it, where did the Egyptians go? Please, can you answer this? And then the Mississippi River, like the same map of Egypt, and our name can get changed, black color. Why you keep changing our name? Either ancient. Question. Either ancient Egypt for either religion or masonry, but to America. It is fact that at Memphis, Egypt, in the pyramids, under the guidance of the kings and the mystic rites of masonry, were worked many thousands of years ago but at that time egypt and the continent of america were one and the same number six in america rediscovered in the 15th century and repopulated in the 17th do you see that rediscovered after pangaea and the catastrophe that you read about in the book of Ezekiel in the 15th century and repopulated in the 17th. That means everything prior to these centuries is made up history. The remnant, those who are controlling governments today, took the history and tried to write themselves in to make it seem like they've always been there. There's a lot we are going to uncover in future videos. Repopulated in the 17th was recovered Egypt and the Promised Land, or the land of the constellation of the eagle. And we know America is represented by the eagle with the flag. This can go deep.
always wondered. Now, I don't know about y'all, but that that kind of looks like a pyramid to me, right? Kind of looks like a in pyramid Texas with a little temple thing at top, like a Chichen Itza. That was pretty cool. And there's this uh What they do, fam? Before I start TikTok, this is for entertainment purposes only. But if you don't know, now you know. America is Egypt, fam. I know they taught us that it was over there, fam, in Africa, but over here, fam, this is the old new world. Must understand and overstand, fam, that everything we've been told is a lie. It's ass backwards. We are 180 degrees from the truth. Y'all think over there is the Middle East, but really the Middle East over here. Got places like this, Thebes, Village in Illinois. Same thieves over there in Egypt, fam. Same, same thing. It gets deeper, family. Over here, thieves is right there. And look, look what Memphis at. Look what Memphis at. Then we got Memphis, right? Over there in that Egypt, right? You see Memphis, see Cairo. But there's a goddamn Egypt in Memphis, Tennessee. Let's keep going. And then you got Memphis in Cairo. Damn. Fam, I don't believe in no coincidences whatsoever. Then we dig a little deep, we understand that there are hella pyramids, mounds, catacombs running all up and through North America, family. In one of my past videos, I have mentioned that Kentucky is Lower Egypt and they found catacombs full of mummies. You need to also keep in mind, fam, that they found hella giant bones in America. If you was looking at both of them, you'll say, damn, they damn near line up with each other. Because, fam, the giants once roamed over here in the Americas. Our ancestors are giants, family. Now, I know it's hard for some of y'all to fathom that, you know, giants are real and they once roamed this realm. But, fam, that is absolutely correct. But what they didn't tell you, fam, if you got carbon in your skin, you no, know, if you got carbon running through your body, you got nine ether as your antennas, you are those giants, fam. Got hella temples in the Grand Canyon, which they don't want us to go in, or you can't even fly. You can't even fly them drone uh, uh, across the damn Grand Canyon. I wonder why, fam. Because if we go into that shit, we might fuck around and unlock some. Also, if you go look up Eden, right, like the Garden of Eden, it pulls up hella Eden in in North Central America and South America, fam. In this book, I showed y'all, right, by Wisher Serve, he talks about Lemuria, the lost continent in the Pacific, not Atlantic, the Pacific. He talks about the Garden of Eden, right? He says a few years ago, some scientists advanced the idea that the Valley of the Ohio River might have been the real Garden of Eden. One of my old videos, fam, down here, I have mentioned right here, and I, the Lord God, caused a river to go out of Eden to water the garden, and from hence, it has parted and became into four heads. Let me show you something. Stay with me, fam. All right, now right here, right? Follow me, follow me. Right here, down here, right? Now river, right? It said four heads, right? Let's count. One, two, three, four. Once again, fam, I don't believe in coincidences. One thing to keep in mind, fam, especially if you look like me, fam, you carbonated, melanated, all that. We are walking on the holy land, fam. We ain't from Africa, fam. They want us to go back to Africa so they can take our land, fam. All right? It's plain and simple. Claim your land. Claim your nationality, fam. Once we do that, once we know who we are, where we at, we got it. Peace of God and God is known and unknown. I say. I was very young when I visited the Grand Canyon for my very first time on a family vacation. And it was an extraordinary experience for me. I loved it. There I was looking at the, what they call the monuments of the Grand Canyon. And at the time, nobody really paid attention to the names of the uh, features of the Grand Canyon. Um, it, I'm 51 years old now. And it wasn't until I started investigating what I felt was needed to be investigated in the Grand Canyon concerning the Egyptian artifact find down in the underground dwellings, citadels, that had the Asian artifacts. They had hieroglyphics, they had uh, 
they had things that were taken by the Smithsonian Institute in the year uh, 1907 and 1909. 1909 is when the Phoenix Gazette came out with their article chronicling uh, G.E. Kincaid, who was sent from the Smithsonian Institute to uh, do an archaeological investigation there. And that's when it was discovered that Egyptian artifacts indeed were there. But no news from then on. And people talk about that experience. Uh, it's wrapped in myth. Very difficult to understand it unless you're connected with the Hopi Indian tribe and other Indian tribes that would tell you otherwise what that canyon really is. And I think that uh, I pretty much discovered just through an intellectual survey of what it might be. And then a uh, little over a year ago, here at the University of Arizona Library, I decided to pull out one of the topographical maps of Grand Canyon to see if the stars of Orion would match up with any of the uh, pinnacles, the highest peaks, the altitude peaks of this topographical map. Sure enough, it did take about 20 minutes to size that star chart which I created a transparency out of in Photoshop. And, uh, and I got the alignment. What seems to really fit are the major stars that are not the belt stars that we find in the Giza Plateau with the three great pyramids. They happen to be uh, the shoulder stars, uh, Betelgeuse and Bellatrix, and then the kneecap stars, I think you would call that the hunter constellation of Orion. That is Orion. South and Rigel. And then Mintaka would be one of the stars of the belt system. And those were the major ones. They lined up with Isis Temple. They lined up with uh, Isis Temple is Rigel matches up with Sumner Butte. Bellatrix matches up with Isis Temple. Betelgeuse matches up with Tower of Set. And uh, south line up with O'Neill Butte, where the natural arch is. And it's quite possible that reorienting this, I might get other matches, but these are the ones that turned out to be the closest. So the ancient Egypt, the original one, not the one that we know of today, is actually in America. I well, let's talk about the Grand Canyon. TikTok, this is only for entertainment purposes only. All right, so there's been a lot of speculations and theories going around about how the Grand Canyon is the path to Africa and um, how America is really ancient Egypt. I mean, if you really look into it and do your research, a lot of interesting facts you will find on this topic. All right, so supposedly back in 1909, there's two archaeologists who supposedly found a lot of ancient artifacts, um, Egyptian artifacts back in the Grand Canyon. According to this article right here, the Professor Jordan and Kincaid stated that they found hundreds of Egyptian artifacts in those tunnels of the Grand Canyon that dated back to the era of the ancient Egyptian King Ramses, somewhere around 1250 BC. I mean, when we speak about Egypt, what's the thing that, the first thing that comes to mind? It would be pyramids, right? But did you know that the most pyramids and the most ancient pyramids is found here in North America? And if you include South and Central America, it's not even a contest. As a matter of fact, according to this article right here, pyramids in America first appeared 5,000 years ago. Nearly 2,000 different pyramids can be found in North, Central, and South America from Peru to the United States. Now, let's dig more deep into this. Let's talk about the most known ancient Egyptian god, Horus. He's basically um, the son of Orias and Isis, the divine child of the holy family in Tyrid. So he is depicted as half human and half falcon. I mean, if you Google what type of falcon Horus was, two comes up in mind. One is the linear falcon, and two is the peregrine falcon. Now, the peregrine falcon, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, is also known as the duck hawk, who is native to North America only. I mean, but scratch that. Let's talk about these two pictures right here. The picture to the right is the picture of Horus, and the picture to the left is the aplomatic falcon, which supposedly... Hor Horus was basically patterned after the Apomato Falcon, which is also only indigenous to the Americas. And you know what I find even more interesting? In this article that was published in 1930 about a, um, Boy Scouts discovering an Egyptian Sphinx in Mexico. You can take a look at it, poise it if you want. Yeah. 
You know how they like to hide the truth. Also, I'm just going to set this video right here. Now, I'm not sure who's the original content creator of this video. As someone does know, please tag them in the comments below. But take a look at this right here. Gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. So was America really the true old world? Oh yeah, and there's way more proof and facts that leads to America being ancient Egypt. And stick around for part two, and we're gonna dig more deeper at how the path to Africa is through the Grand Canyon. Stay tuned for part. This is only for entertainment purposes only. TikTok, this is all a lie. I'm just having fun. All right, let's get into this. America is really ancient Egypt and the Grand Canyon part three. All right, so I know I talked about how um, the Grand Canyon is really the path to Africa or how America is really ancient Egypt, but let's dig more deeper into this, shall we? For starters, let's talk about this picture in the background. Now, this picture is a picture of the Grand Canyon, and this is uh, Vishnu's temple. So I just want you to take a good look at this picture. Now, if you're really studying this picture and really look at it, you can almost kind of make out a figure in the rock formation. Now, I want you to take a good look at this picture right here. This picture is the Great Sphinx of Giza. Now, let's put two and two together. It almost kind of looks the same. If you really look at the photos of each, just really pay attention to the rock formation of both photos. Oh, but wait, there's more. Let's get more deep into this, but I'm going to need y'all to follow me. Okay, so as I mentioned in my previous videos of this archaeologist named Kincaid, how he... It is so pangolin. Even Arpa wants a bit. Go on. <gasps> you fucking bitch! You... Oh my god! Now, he's about 14 years old. <laughs> He doesn't like the cold as much as the tigers, do you? But he's choosing to be outside, and if it gets really cold, he can go into his den in the back. Right, Tao? <laughs> I better leave them damn animals alone. Okay, so it's 2022, and you're learning that pyramids are all over the world, especially all over America. And even if the Grand Canyon doesn't have any pyramids, you wouldn't know because there's still civilizations that are alive today that walk and live amongst the creases of those mountains that we are not allowed to make contact with for whatever reason. So the smart people say that the Egyptians came over here many years ago and brought over their artifacts and all of that, yada, yada, yada. Even if that is true, okay, cool. Now, may I remind you, before you develop this colonizer program, man, what does Mexico, California, Arizona, and Illinois all have in common? It's all motherfucking connected. They just put lines and colors on it and told you that they were very different and with different people. But before all that shit was going on, this was all Turtle Island. Who says, why are you bringing up Turtle Island? Because the pyramids in Mexico are older than the pyramids in Egypt. The pyramids in Mexico are older than the pyramids in Africa. So if we already had our own now river, our own pyramids, our own sound machines, our own culture and language and ways of living. Why is it so hard to believe that the Americas ain't sacred? I feel extremely connected to my continent and I know I have African descent in me too. Both are very beautiful and I'm proud of. Ask yourself this, if the Americas is not sacred with hidden history and power, why would the foreigners and governments go through so much difficulty to keep this land? Most of us is already home. A lot of us don't know where home is. But why won't these foreign gangs go back home? Because this is it. This is the big banger. This is the big baby. Because this is the real money. We heard about these caves in the western panhandle of Oklahoma, far out west, in which ancient Egyptians and Phoenicians came to this land 1500 BC, 3500 years ago, and they left their art, their markings in the rock called petroglyphs, claiming the land for their god, Baal. 
So this is how we began to see these ancient Egyptians came here and claimed the land. They brought that spirit of Baal to our land even before the white man ever came. It's here. almost like they made a covenant. They with did. This they ma- exactly said that's exactly right. They made a covenant and a blood covenant with Baal, and they claimed this land. And there's a timeline in that cave that wherever the sun hits it at any particular day, it tells the sun worshipers, the Baal worshipers, what worship to do on that day to Baal. There are over a hundred pyramids along the Mississippi River. Ramses III, a pharaoh or a Nesut of the 19th dynasty, there's evidence of him on the Mississippi River. There's evidence of Egypt in America that goes back many millennia. We know that the Kemites, the Egyptians, the, the Sudanese had this power. We know that they had the boats that would be able to make a trip this way, along with the fact that they had different types of ways in which to power it, whether it was through the wind or whether it was through oars. They knew how to travel the waters that would be the ocean currents and the wind systems, and they knew the seasons to know when they, the winds would be at their best, so they knew when to travel. You can see it in the civilization of the Olmec, of the Maya, of the pyramids. There- Y'all be killing me in the comment section. The old map shows Egypt is in America. Ain't no damn Egypt in America. I'm going to tell you right now, the only thing you're going to come close to is this shit right here in Las Vegas, the Luxor Hotel. That's the only Egypt in America that y'all ass is ever going to find. I don't mean to break your little Tomerian hearts, but um, y'all need to get that shit up. Flying over Arizona, I was amazed. This really looks like ancient Egypt. And the Nile River runs very far. That's why when you go read stories of ancient Egypt, they talk to you about Egypt was a beautiful city that sat right off the Nile River. It was another ancient city, beautiful city that was not that far from Egypt. Egypt was a beautiful city that sat off the Nile River. There was another beautiful city not that far from Egypt that set off the Nile River too, and it was called Memphis. Now over here in America, look at where Memphis sits at. It sits right off the Mississippi River, don't it? If you go look at a map, look at the way the Nile River runs. Now go look at the way the Mississippi River runs. So let me get this right. You mean to tell me that ancient Egyptians could have already been here? That face of the Grand Canyon is a natural anomaly. There's no way the Egyptians were over here. How do you think they got over here? Well, they probably built ships. But then again, how did you get over here? They could have already been over here. And look at the details of that natural anomaly. What's up? The thing I found about the Egyptians in Ohio was actually from a paper that was written. It's it's postulating it, I guess. They took a lot of the evidence that they had been finding and saying this shows that there might have actually been Egyptians there. That's from 1937? That's when the guy was, I think, born. This is 40 years ago. Oh, so wow. That amulet was brass, apparently, and it was found mm-hmm. near Cincinnati. And where I actually think that it might have been trading, trade routes, because there was some, like, uh, stones that have been found in various parts of the world that are from specifically Ohio because it's like a rainbow shale that was used in, like, arrowheads and stuff a long, long time ago. Hmm. Like, that area was used to make weapons, like, the, the first like 12,000 years ago when the first people were kind of in North America. But that area in Ohio also is known as the standstone capital of the world. And I don't know if that's related to the Egyptians. Hmm. That's what the pyramids are made out of, you know. Mm-hmm. There's tons of sandstone that is very specific to that region. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, pyramids made out of sandstone? I thought so. Yeah, uh, yeah I've heard this there's 21, from 1800 to 1980, 21 times the amount of sandstone that made the Great Pyramid was shipped out of Ohio to make various buildings all over the world. Really? Most of them in the United States, obviously, but all over the place. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, just weird this, facts I found after Graham came through. The history of the humans. We don't know history. We know some. Right? The, only, the only history that we know is the one we go discover on our own time. The one that's presented to us is not history. It's, it's all lies. Uh, well, it's not all lies. All of There's it. There's some lies. I found that too. I didn't Lost Civilization in Grand Canyon was, wait, Egyptian? Yeah, the Smithsonian published mm. some stuff in 1909, oh, wow. I guess, that where all this came from. There was an article that got written, and I don't know how much of it they proved or pro- was proven or was just newspaper. It's like bait back in the day. Look at this. Kind Even of, more but... amazing. The artifact didn't match up to anything 
on the known record rather than appearing to be of Native American origin, as one might expect, the object had distinct Egyptian or Tibetan designs. Mm -hmm. Could there have been an entire civilization of Egyptians living here? Mm -hmm. If so, how did they get here? Mm -hmm. Dun, dun, dun. It's not that hard. Hop in a boat, man. You got cats that leave Africa and try to come to Spain on these pl pl places on a uh, chicken wing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? It is interesting, right? Like the population of Cuba. Cuba is so insanely diverse, and it's right there. Like what is the history of that other than the slave routes? Like what is the history of Cuba? Because Cuba is very distinct African people living there. Mm -hmm. The whole Caribbean, all that, all that whole area. Is uh, has a lot of African roots to it, uh, but that's just a place that was conquered by the Spain, you know, by by the Cortezes, you know, those type of people. Um, well, what really disturbs me is there's no way to know exactly what happened. It's like you're piecing things together based on artifacts and historical mm -hmm. record, things that people wrote down, and journals and logs. And it's, well, there's it, people that have traveled, so. Again, I've studied this so long ago, but mm -hmm. I remember reading primary source from somebody that traveled with Cristobal Colon, a.k.a. Christopher Columbus. And he was saying very specific things about his accounts when he reached these different places. You know, and he was saying things like, we got to the land and we found Africans. And he, I remember him specifically wow. saying, uh, so no matter where we go, we find Africans. And he said it as if he was disappointed. And, he, and then they started talking about like, you know, this is th they started talking about their culture and describing their culture. You just got to go look at the people that travel with Cristobal Colon. And, and there's some firsthand accounts there. And they're very honest about it. You know, dude, I'm going to look into that now. That's yeah. a very interesting. I'm going to ask Graham about that, too, what he knows about it. Yeah. He's studied, uh, I mean, especially on his, his latest book, he studied a lot about uh, the, the various cultures that made it to North America and South okay. America. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is very rich in history. Very, very rich in history. Question. No fucking way, boy. With the crown in Sedona. Okay. These things are real, you guys, and, and nobody's on here trying to make you believe it. You have to see these things for yourself. The lion heads are in Sedona. The rocks have been worn. Look at the um, the Olmec, the statue of the Olmecs in Sedona, you guys. Sedona, Arizona. Well, let me see if I can find something else. Um, that I thought would be more of uh, really interesting. Singing birds. These these are bird beings, you guys. Again, bird beings are in the rocks. These are ancient temples in Sedona from ancient Atlantis. They try to say that Atlantis is a is a fable, is a myth. No, it is not. It predates Kemet. Okay. Okay. Queens and kings of Sedona. Atlantean queens and kings these are the queens and kings of atlantis okay carved within the rocks in sedona right king Zo zozar kings of thunder mountain These ancient carvings have been worn over a millennia, right? The, you cannot deny this. When water wears on rocks, then the, the appearance of them disintegrates. Look, look at that face right there. We are here. We have been here. We didn't come from no daggone Africa. We have been in the United States. We are indigenous to the United States. Because the United States is Egypt. And, the, and when I have the opportunity to go back to Sedona, look at this. When I have the opportunity to go back to Sedona, I will give you guys, a, and I will go back on it. I will just, I will go back on this tour just to create live footage, live videos of these. 
because this is for real this is for real nobody playing like no games like we're not trying to we're not clout chasing we trying to get you hip to your own fucking lineage we trying to we trying to make you aware of your power because they got you thinking that your power is somewhere across the ocean. No, it is not. Your power is right here in the United States. They they have found ancient relics, gold tablets under the in within the Grand Canyon, and they don't want you to know this. The more they have you looking up far away from yourself, the longer it would take for you to come and step into your true power. And, on, and ain't nobody on here debating with y'all. You don't have to believe this. You do not have to believe this, but it is the truth. Because I have seen this with my very own eyes. This is, um, this is Thunder Rock. This is a temple. I stood on, on, this, on the mountain right across from this. And it, it's a ancient temple sitting right there in front of us. People go to Sedona all the time because they know this. People don't know this. Before uh, our people know this, the, the Asians, they stay in Sedona. The Anglos, the, the Caucasians, they stay in Sedona because they know what's there. Do you understand? And it is us who are original from, from this place who don't even believe, right? Look at that. That we are from this land. This is our land. Hey, you guys, I just wanted to share a few photos. I recently um, moved to Arizona and I visited Sedona. And a lot of people have difficulties accepting that um, Egypt is in the United States. The Grand Canyon, Sedona have relics that are much older and predate that in which we've seen in ancient Kemet. And so I just wanted to show you guys this in the book. I went there on my own. I actually had uh, participated in the tour of these ancient relics, and I've seen them with my own eyes. The next time I go to Sedona, I will definitely do a live video so that people can see this. But as you can see, this is Osiris. This is a monument that was built in Sedona. You can see the rocks are red where the water where the rocks were underneath the water that means that this place was underneath water the great flood the rocks are red when it when the water oxygenates the sediments they turn red okay and then you can see in the rocks as well isis this is in ancient kemet this is in sedona there is no denying what you see right in front of you i have seen these ancient statues with my own eyes you can see her curves and everything is right there but this is just a book that they give us from the tour this is the temple of isis that is her freaking throne listen you guys this is in sedona and when you go to the grand canyon there are some other gods that have written, written books that have shown these things here is thoth thoth is the the bird being you can see his beak and everything sitting right here this is the ancient kemet this is in Sedona. Ra in Sedona. Thoth in Sedona. Thoth in Sedona. Okay. This is also Horus. In Sedona. The, the rocks are worn. This is Anubis in Sedona. The rocks are worn. Okay. Hathor. This is Hathor here. The rocks are worn, you guys. This is Sedona. This is Ma'at in Sedona. Akhenaten in Sedona within the rocks. Akhenaten in Sedona in the rocks. Well, that does kind of resemble something a little bit. These predate Kemet. The rocks have been underwater and they have experienced wear and tear. Massive amounts of wear and tear. Here's Thoth again. Thoth, the god of wisdom. Right? The bird being, the beak. In Sedona. Okay? 
And what else do we have here? We have camels, baboons. Which, oh, look at that face. Look at that face right there. In the rocks, in Sedona, you cannot deny this. One thing I can't deny is the many different faces that's lining up in there. So it looks like definitely there was some carvings. And the fact that water oxygenizes when the rocks turn red, that might be something added to it too. Hey, this is the first time I've seen this. This is a live reaction. You know, um, this is my first time seeing this. It's almost done. Okay. The Sphinx. There is a Sphinx in Sedona. You can see this clearly. I'm going to find another angle. Oh, okay, here it is. You can see Yeah, this is my first time seeing that the Egypt in America and I can see some similarities. Um I believe in the son and the father. I believe they've been there this entire time. That's just my personal beliefs. So I wonder how this correlates into the new paradigm of Egypt being in America is my questions, personal questions. Your thoughts below. Let me know what you guys think. interesting it is a facts page that contains a list of people and events in chronological order it says whereupon we reckon that from adam unto christ at 3947 years six months and ten days and from the birth of christ to this present year is 1814 years then the whole sum and number of years from the beginning of the world unto this present year is 5,788, six months, and the said odd ten days. True. In the year 1814 the world really was 5,788 years old. This year, 2022, the earth would be approximately 5,998 years old. Not the Teletubbies.
2,000 year old Bible. This is another form of obsidian mirrors. Dang, that's made out of Legos. They went crazy. That would probably cost them about five thousand. That's the Lord of the Rings castle, y'all. Two towers, I believe. Why is he playing with people? She said you have rewards. Oh my goodness. She was still gonna give him his rewards. Actually the North Pole. The North Pole's been sailed every year for 30 years. Uh, it's off from the North Pole several hundred miles. This is in a region that's never been sailed before. It's between the magnetic North Pole and the actual North Pole. The waters are reported to be the roughest on the planet, so we're talking 10-story seas. This is not going to be a pleasure cruise by any stretch of the imagination. We'll be breaking ice for eight days to get there, so it's, it's an, not an easy place to get to. But, uh, it's not actually the North Pole. The he, just, he just spilled the beans, didn't he? Yo, I got a creepy feeling about this, man. This this might be real. Man, this looks authentic. And y'all gotta tell me what y'all thought that was rocking in that cave and then it disappeared? What was that? Man, it looked authentic to me. That would have been the camera was shaking and it didn't it didn't look animated, man. That would have been tough to pull off. What was that? said they put that rock in a tomb that is mysterious for sure
These are seven mysterious creatures. Oh, that's just somebody's shoulder. I don't know. Guys, this looks Aztec, but can you guys identify this? What were they working on? Ah, oh, hex, nah. No! What did they mean by the Pharaoh book did not burn in the fire? What what type of meaning does that mean? How how, how are they finding these? Word. It looks like a golden sword. straight out of the Lord of the Rings for real. guys on that golden sword what would you do with it comments in the below if you haven't already hit that like and subscribe button we on these dark waters today on this sunday i hope y'all toasty in this cold weather
this look like those goat men what were they called satires or something satyrs satyrs that's what they are super rare they say that they somewhere around here you guys heard of satyrs What does this say? What does the scorpion represent? Mercury, what's the significance? I don't know if you guys was playing close attention, but that video had some significance to the free energy movement. I don't know if you guys seen what just happened, but what if Ace Ventura 2 was never about the guano? Newest conspiracy, you heard it here first. Jesky, Chuck, Creepy, and Bizarre TikToks. What if the Ace Ventura movie was never about the bat guano? What if they was trying to get the mercury, y'all? Think about it. What's up with these scorpions? Why am I getting the baby kids vibes? Like they doing something they shouldn't be doing. This may be a critical instrument to free energy. the jackpot what Chris Tucker say on rush hour man I look good in my bathroom
Give them up, man. Let me shine a couple of those boys up, man. Give them up, man. You got them all dusty and stuff. Let me get that piece right there. Them two right there. Item 2657? Are they auctioning these boys? Yo, I think they auctioning these, man. They said we can't do nothing with them. We need bread. Send us the money. What you want? This centerpiece? Give us 5000 We got you. That's what's going on here, y'all. We are looking at actual treasure hunters. And they like, if y'all got the coin, we'll give you what you want. That's what I'm getting here, y'all. They said the Vatican's trying to get this book. I'm just now learning about the Vatican archives that they said how it's a mile long. Books nobody can't read with all types of different information. And they looking for this one? They looking for both these books, y'all. The Vatican's looking for both these books. How cool is that? What type of map was that? looks like an astronomy did they have the edge on that map that's definitely for the stars Thirty four hundred years old. Definitely some type of oppression going on. Wow, that's what it came in? inside some type of sarcophagus.
looks like a, a computer system, an ancient computer system, if you ask me. At first glance, anyway. This is authentic, if you ask me. They definitely in some uncharted waters over there. Where do you guys think these are taking place? Like there's so much undiscovered. It's all buried. About 500 feet underground, hidden from us. So many treasures. Looks like some type of traveler ram. What type of star is that? And why the horns on the bindings? What did you guys see those ram horns on the side? I'm like a book pops out. This looks like some type of strap on it. The Chicago Bulls, what they got going on? Tell me that didn't look like the Chicago Bulls. Hold on, y'all. We going back for that one. Tell me that's not the Chicago Bulls logo. Look how ancient, if they did this 3,000, 2,000 years ago, what, what's going on, y'all? What does that say? This better not say Chicago Bulls. I'm telling y'all right now. Scrolls made out of snakes. Hey, we in Dark Waters 9, y'all. Now you see why the Slytherin was on what they was on. This is Team Slytherin right here, y'all. The whole crux in real life. This is a whole crux in real life. Look like they made it from a pole constrictor.
Tell me that wasn't Gray Skull from He Man we just saw. And looking at that snake only could remind me of Team Slytherin all the way. Where's the whole crux? Where's where's the uh um what was that thing called? The Leviathan tooth when you need it to stab that. been 3d printing y'all this ain't nothing new they been 3d printing we just now 3d pen they've been doing this 3,000 years ago except they've been 3d printing with gold I wonder how much they took out of the Lord of Rings books from the actual movies that they put into the actual movies. That looks like it's written in Greek. that palm tree symbolized at the end of that book that was interesting This is the only animal in the world that produces natural mercury. This is the this is an important ingredient to the free energy, man. We need to start farming these boys, man. We need to start growing them. You know, we we need we need these boys to be plentiful, you know? Make sure the conditions are just right for all of them. I'm telling you, Ace Ventura 2 was trying to tell us, man. Jim Carrey and Ace Ventura 2 they were trying to let us know what was really going on. The 
He says, does anyone know which prophet this belongs to? Look how, look how tight this is. This is very well made. That's, what do you guys think that is? What do you guys think that was? It was like some type of personal amulet slash book. Man, what could that be? I'm fascinated by that one. I have no idea what that could possibly be. Creepy and bizarre TikTok for real. Artifact, an alien gray artifact. Straight out of the movie, The Predator. That looks like some type of microchip markings on the back. This might be an instrument to plug into some type of technology, to be honest. Yeah, this one is interesting. I wonder what that says on the back. Those hieroglyphs? What does it say? Was this written with gold? I'm going to translate these for us. In later episodes, I'm going to translate all of these for us. 
we have the technology now where we can take pictures of this stuff and we can get it translated um so yeah we're going to get all these translated in future videos um once once the studio the jet jet studio gets a little bit bigger technology hold on that look like a black dude riding a horse at the end What is going on? A gold horse? That couldn't possibly be the donkey. That might be the donkey where he rolled into Jerusalem. Dang. We're going to get all that stuff transferred. It's probably Matthew. Uh, it's probably the new. By looking at this picture, it's probably the new gospel. Uh, Matthew uh, through Acts. But uh, yeah, and um, yeah, we still gonna get it all translated, and we need to find out the original language that it was from. But this is extremely interesting. You can see this like gold veil around him, like a halo. Probably was his aura. think about that last video that was extremely interesting to say the least but written with gold pages man that is shocking This looks like that Mercury from uh, the Batcave. Yep, this is it. Why does garlic repel? Did you guys see that? They put garlic up to it like a real vampire. And it's like, no, I don't want any parts. No, I don't want any parts. But as soon as you put gold, gold is attracted to it. What is the similarity of vampires and mercury now? Is this a new conspiracy we're unraveling on the dark waters with these bats and mercury? Vampires and mercuries and garlic now? Garlic repels? Mercury? Why? What's the significance of garlic? I know it has very good healing properties if you eat it by itself. So what is that thing? For educational, I mean for entertainment purposes only. All this is for entertainment purposes. We got this one. And then we got this one now, and they both appear to be different maps, and they both appear to show the exact same thing. And I looked up the cranial formation, and it's not too far off from that. I mean, it really isn't. So um, if anybody has any information, I'd sure like to hear about it, because I have nothing more on this. It really does fit, I'm telling you. I mean, that's like the cartilage off his nose. And the, 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 the skull areas seem to be pretty close to, to looking like this so if anybody can help we'd, we'd love to have this and the size of the creatures that we are talking about this is not outside of the realm of possibilities i know it sounds insane but it is what it is all right this is what tendon balls look like and this is what moons look like that is where the tendon ball was attached they are biological you see that that's iopetus it's got the same type of implant. Some of them have two, some of them have one. Some of them have ridges, some of them don't have ridges. But they are all moons. I mean, they are all tendon balls. There's an equilateral ridge in Iopetus. Right, there's Tetris. Same thing. They're all the same. This is Iopetus again. Oh, no, no, this is Mimas. You see, they're all the same. It's they cut up bodies of the gods. Uh, that's all I can tell you. And the head could be Africa. I have no idea. I'd love to see a little more on that 
that uh, map. All right, this is Comet 67P on top of Raleigh, North Carolina. You can see the size of it. That is also a tendon ball. Anybody that's been following me knows it's a tendon ball. That t that is the tendon ball right there, and this stalk came out, and this one got ripped. He said, "Anybody still following me? Still, hey, shout out Mud Mud Fossil in University, man. You're definitely interesting and entertaining. You know, I like those videos." Ripped out and still has the actual tendons and a piece of muscle. That is muscle right there, and these little pinches are the muscle bundles. These little fibers are the tendon fibers, and that's exactly what this is, and it is enormous. Space is filled with the bodies of creatures. I cannot account for that other than this was written about in the past, and everybody thought it was hysterical, but it may just be historical. <laughs> Now, the crazy thing is, these tendon balls are these little these tiny, tiny balls, balls that are inside. inside. He's spitting joints of your body that lock and secure the muscles and tendons into the into something secure so you can pull your muscles against them so some of these are tiny little tendon balls the one that i showed you like um uh, 67p comma 67p is, is something like this other ones lay out flat and then they have all kinds of balls inside the muscle and so forth that hold things other ones form balls and then out of that ball comes the stalk 67p is this type the other ones i think are from areas of this but they are all biological and all of the astronauts say when they go out in space and they come back from the capsule their space suits smell like steak yo that is definitely interesting looking at what he just said and reacting to that africa being a skull island that is definitely interesting and tight it kind of looks like it to be honest you know just looking at it from you know first glance like it on its side laying there where's the rest of the body at is the main question is what i'll be asking and it looked like he was trying to say like the moon was an eyeball <laughs> S A. That's definitely interesting as well. I was today years old when I found out about giant grasshoppers. Why? seen in my life that's a fucking tarantula crazy dude holy shit holy shit no 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 no, no. why are those bugs so big did you see that tarantula it was paying rent that was his crib he just got evicted A team of Japanese researchers, using satellite imagery and artificial intelligence, have discovered more than 140 new Nazca lines in Peru. The Nazca lines are a series of ancient geoglyphs etched into the desert floor and have been a mystery for centuries. The newly discovered lines were not visible to the naked eye due to erosion and human activity, but the AI algorithms were able to detect them by analyzing subtle variations in the terrain. The new lines add to the already impressive collection of Nazca geoglyphs which include depictions of animals, plants, and geometric shapes. The discovery highlights the potential of AI in uncovering new archaeological discoveries and sheds lights on the rich history and culture of the Nazca people because a team of Japanese researchers... So tell me, do you believe? believe? Was Disney trying to tell us something?
crazy, right? Some things are just an optical illusion, right? Well, is this an optical illusion? Look at that and tell me you don't know what that is. Go ahead and tell me that confidently and mean it because you know darn well what that is. You can see it. No, that's not a carving. That's a petrified animal from the days of old. Do you see this? Yes. Do you see this? Yep. It's freaking nature and it's freaking awesome. Yes, it is. <laughs> And I don't think science can properly explain how these animals were petrified so quickly to where they were able to preserve their form through all these years. And you know, that really got me thinking. There's plenty of statues on this earth that are thousands of years old. Now, what if they were petrified beings? Now, I know it's just the thought. And yeah, I can't wait for the Mount Rushmore jokes. And you can joke all you want, but I promise you truth is stranger than fiction. So tell me, do you believe was Disney trying to Alright guys, so for this particular one, I'm gonna get on ahead and give a shout out from from the get-go. Uh at Roger from Mud Fossil University. Even though me and the man might have a fundamental uh disagreement when it comes to the shape of the earth, the man is on point on a lot of topics. And I'm gonna just get into you know what 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 he talks about when it comes to the transition metals and what we perceive to be these colossuses such as the one uh pictured here in this image and just just the absolute insanity of these things that we see in reality and most people will gaslight us with saying that oh man it's just a just a statue or it's just a rock, you know, formation or whatever, you know. Uh, it's all the talking points people like to, you know, push on the truth or community that uh, we like to bring up. So, without further ado, let's get into this. So, of course, if you haven't seen any of the videos on Mud Fossil University, Roger talks about in several videos what transition metals are and how these specific metals in the periodic table of elements correlates in reality with these quote-unquote colossuses or statues that we see in Greece or throughout our realm and it's interestingly enough uh, it's interesting enough to know that these specific metals do change their properties uh, over time or through the loss of quote-unquote uh, um, you know neutrons protons you know uh, being mixed together with electrons once they're broken down into lesser forms of course I'm talking about it in the most basic context uh, for time's sake here, but let's keep on going. So, just as he has shown on Mud Fossil University, this is the Colasso del Pino, and just as we were talking about before the previous slide with transition metals, you can see there from the top of the calf going down on this specific colossus, you can see that transitional state of the rock formation and however time, you know, blood has started to you know coagulate or solidify if you would into stone uh using gorgon technology the cheese as we've talked about in previous videos not exactly sure but it's even stated by roger himself this was originally organic metal uh, matter and most individuals when they would look at this and be like well there's a building structure inside of this so there's there's no possible way but i think people are being naive for that but anyways Here's another one showing the ankle part of a colossus, and you can see the red metal starting to transition down. I'm going to have to get into part two with this. It's just not enough. See me in the next one. All right, guys. So... Yo, shout out Fallout True for that information. There had to be some type of flash, some type of technology, because... All the statues we see nowadays, it was petrified, like in motion. It was a stance. You know, it wasn't something that slow that happened. It was like a some type of solar flash. He called it organite technology. I don't know. It was some type of some type of intervention happened that petrified them. And I do agree that yes, these were organic originally for entertainment purposes.
Claro, ahí hay una cara, ¿ves? Y qué raro, está como con la boca chueca, ¿no? Uh -uh. Claro, ahí hay una cara, ¿ves? Y qué raro, está como con la boca chueca, ¿no? Uh -uh. No me había dado cuenta yo de eso. Es que yo, es que nosotros la otra vez, no, no, aquí nos quedamos para descansar un poco. Uh -huh. Y de ahí, estamos observando acá, y de ahí, de ahí vimos esa cara y dijimos, sí, por eso no está. Y nos acercamos acá, vemos este hueco y digo, sí, ha sido. Claro, ahí hay una cara, ¿ves? How did it get there? Who, who, who takes the time to carve that looking down at you? Come on, man. That was creepy. Creepy and scary TikTok for real. I'm going to show you guys four or five videos that may actually prove the existence of giants. Starting with this video from Dale of Daxter in Mexico. Check this out. <laughs> In this next video, a couple of people found by accident a giant footprint in Tanzania. Check this out. When it comes to giant footprints, I guess that this next video is one of the best evidence of all. <laughs> But I guess that it gets even stranger. In Google Earth, there's this giant footprint. It's really big. Check this out. Now, this next video was captured by Mary Greeley News YouTube channel, and it was featured all over YouTube and TikTok and TikTok. In this video you can see buffaloes and trees as a reference for size. And if you pay attention here, there are four or five very tall humanoid figures walking very quick for a snowy day in Yellowstone National Park. Whatever these things are, they are walking really fast and they are really much taller than they should be. So this might actually just be a Sasquatch or maybe something else. You tell me. I'm gonna show you guys four or five videos that may actually prove the existence Yo, those are some good videos. Those are some good creepy TikToks. I, we don't know what's in Yellowstone. You know, there's so much free Roman land. You know, there's so many caverns going on. We don't, we don't know. We can't keep track of everything. You know, but these cameras might. Did you know that every myth is based on some truth? And did you know that Africa? Could be the real skull island all my days so i stumbled across these old maps and for some reason they've shown africa as a giant skull the landmass fits perfectly there's not just one map there's a few and they all show africa in the same way they always tell you the truth you've just got to be able to understand their language in this movie, they was hinting that giants exist. It's one thing to understand that giants exist, but what about titans? I've always wondered why they always seem to show Africa as the main landmass. They're rubbing it in our faces. The truth is always hidden in plain sight. I wonder if the good book says anything about titans. Many of the dinosaur fossils disclosed to the public are specimens that are of relatively large animals compared to any animal that exists today, but they really are not too much bigger than the blue whale. So, the size of the fossils they present to us are large enough and small enough to keep people sane. One of the things that I've noticed is that there is evidence all around us 
of the prehistoric world of giants and dragons. And because this is a very big world, for one person there seems to be no end to what you'll find here when you are looking for it. In the Bunkan province of Thailand, there is a cave, the Naka Cave. This is right near the border of Thailand and Laos. And the very first thing that you notice, or that I noticed when viewing photographs of this place, is the snake. What is this? Is this a natural formation which includes the head of a serpent? Or is this just an ancient sculpture? Or are we just looking at another example of petrified giant remains? You know... This snake, man, this is probably one of the best, in my opinion, on um, is everything I've seen. This snake in Thailand is definitely uh, Thailand, Thailand, however y'all say it. This is definitely the best as far as it stuff being petrified. They said you can see the head too. Man, if this channel ever takes off, best believe we're doing live adventures. You know, I would go to Thailand and see this, you know like on some National Geographic type stuff, you know, take this channel to the next level, you know, Jet Ski Chuck Treasure Hunter slash uh, the Giant Finder, the Petrified Giant Finder, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, yeah, that, how, how would, how would you guys enjoy that show? Wait here, he could flex his dragon scale throat without, you know, it won't be too stiff. But he's still well plated and it comes right down and it comes down into his guts which happen to be right here <laughs> there's his legs and here is his tail now again you have google earth why should i bother wasting your time there's his tail that's all you come over here you're gonna say well let's show you and then i'll just like leave it at that and Couple last statements and avios con dios amigos. Here's his tail running off, dead dragon effluent. And if you'd like to see another one, all you gotta do is come over to the U.S. of A. Right there. All right. Thanks. I think I showed you the song Pete did, and that was just a couple weeks later, May third, same year. And here it is, space station flyover of Morocco. Could reptile scales are incredible and rugged geology. Share it on social media. I never saw it. I, maybe they shared it, but I didn't see it. Okay, my friends, all I want to do is re-engage with NASA. They said they asked. See, look, space station flyover of Morocco. And then they asked the question, is this reptile scales are incredible and rugged geology in Morocco? They shared it on social media. I'd like to respond. That definitely looked like reptile scales. And um, if that is a dragon, my question is, what dropped it? Something had to drop that dragon. What dropped it? Oh, they said we got another one in the States, too? Ooh, 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 fun day at Mud Fossil University <laughs> for years now. This dragon's eye, and I had no clue really too much about it. I just looked at it, and I originally thought it was just a stone tendon ball. However, I do believe it is a dragon's eye. And it, I got popped with a couple of hits this morning. This came from Christina uh, Kruger, I believe is her name, Christina. I'm sorry, but you know he loves it when he hits you at that. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> hey, we live for this stuff, man. Hit that like and subscribe button. Shout out to my boy Mud Fossil, man. There's some validity in here, y'all. Christina Kruger, I believe it is. Ooh, 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 ooh. Fun day at Mud Fossil. I'm sorry, it's Christina Cooper. Uh, and this is, look at this very carefully. See this, how square that off that is? 
how amazingly squared off that is. And I have other shots of this from different perspectives. And a couple of guys just did a, a video about going in here. Now, look at these layers. You see the size of this thing? You know how many layers there are? <laughs> There's a bazillion. I think that's a technical term. Okay, it's pretty obvious that this thing is coming down this way and it's coming up to meet itself in a pinch here, which an eye does, and down here. Now, I don't have the best shots of this thing because I was never really that interested. I thought it was a tendon ball, and they are everywhere. Let me show you what I originally thought it was and why I now realize it is not what I thought it was. All right, you see this? This is what I thought it was originally, that big dragon's eye. But these are just stone balls, and these are tendon balls. They're all over the earth. I mean, just everywhere. And they are serviced by blood, and they erode sometimes, just like that did. And um, that's another erode. You can see the top fell off over there. I mean, they're all over the earth. And everybody says, oh, what are these? We can't figure it out. Well, I figured it out. They're tendon balls. And that's what sometimes they have this, and then they have the chert around the outside, which you... Uh, sometimes they'll take on a color of like copper or something which is in the area and they have like a surrounding shell but nothing like the, the, the um, eyeballs and then they come in vast quantities here and there the Moki marbles are unbelievable there's just Brazilians I mean, they're everywhere, they're all over the earth and every day I see people saying oh well, I wonder what they are they are tendon balls these are actually interstitium balls, most of them. These are interstitium balls. When you see them in clay, in the red, white, brown, yellow clay, that's skin. It's literally skin. And that was the flesh of the people that they, or whoever it was that it was in. See them in the ball? That's, that's the clay of somebody's body. Some creature's body. I'm not saying somebody. Right, there they are, they're washed up everywhere. I mean, they're literally everywhere because the earth is literally made of them, is made of creatures. Now, again, that's another one of these balls, but there's nothing like the, the number of layers in the dragon eyes. All right, those guys got big balls. Let's see, here's a gigantic big ball. What's this? Right, you see it right there? This is the kind of, and they're all over here, see them? Boom, 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 boom. That is filled with sand. Some of them are filled with sand. Some of them are filled with pockets of, they look like they could almost move a little bit against each other and still really, really retain solid. These, I, I don't know why they filled with sand, but there must have been something internally in there. Let's see what's this one. Uh, here's, a, here's another style. These are the kind that have like structural. I think that might be able to do a little of this and not completely destroy itself. I don't know. I'm just guessing. But it's some kind of a. What's this? One? Oh, this is at least. Let's see what he's saying. See, like like an intestine. Like somebody carved it. No, that's the blood supply coming into those those little pockets. Here's another one, Lee. Something. Mean? That's the pockets are inside. They erode sometimes. If there's salts, they do one thing. If there's acids, they do something else. That, I don't know what the hell is going on. Somebody cut that, it looks like to me. Yeah, some type of laser. A long, long Solar long technology. Long. Now, Lily Lavender sent me this. If you go up and look at Iopetus, the moon, it's identical, absolutely identical. And even if you look down here, you can see where the cord came in to attach to that, which all of these tendon balls have a cord. Right, same thing over there. It's just like Iop Iopetus too. Right, Take us back to the dragon eye. Now, these are a certain type of tendon ball. They call them concretions. They must have been in some kind of... Uh, this, uh, I believe, is a magnetite, or it might have some other metal characteristics to it, but you can see the exact separation. So the internal chemistry was way different. All right. These are in a different type of tissue, but still the same stuff. All right. this is, these are the stone balls, like we just saw a moment ago, and the strap comes right up through here. They're all over the place. This is skin. That is literally kaolin clay, a white person's skin. Brown is a brown person's skin. Red is a red person's skin.
I mean, look up kale and clay. They have the, all of those different colors. That's just a tendon ball, and it opalized, which means it was in a different chemistry. And it, there's a thing called nucleophilic invasion. And whatever the chemistry is, locally it invades. If it can find stability in that was a gem he just said. It has a different structure. To it. They're all different for different places in the body. Where stress is this and that. Now these, the Chinese, it looks like cut them and made plates out of them. Um, you know, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I wanted to see more about the eye, but those balls he was showing was definitely um, interesting. How it could be a tendon. Those balls could be tendons and how it was skin and the sand turned into skin. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, we know they're giants, but, you know, this is alluding to Titans. I wonder what the Bible says about Titans. History of the lost continent of Lemuria. Normally, when people think of a lost continent, the one that comes to mind is Atlantis. But the one you should know about is Lemuria. Lemuria or Mu was an ancient lost continent that was argued to be located in two different places, one being the Pacific Ocean and two being the Indian Ocean between India, Madagascar, and Australia. Weirdly, many well-known scientists and ancient cultures all over the world talked about Lemuria. During the mid-1800s, many biologists tried explaining the similarities in the flora and fauna of India and Madagascar by theorizing this lost continent. The first finding was from British zoologist Philip Sclater who found lemur fossils in Madagascar and India that were completely missing in Africa and the Middle East. So he hypothesized Lemuria as the land route that these lemurs used to travel between these places. But now the mainstream understanding is that they traveled through thousands of miles of sea on rafts of vegetation. Like what? Now there was another man that also supported Philip's theory of Lemuria, that was Ernst Haeckel, who literally wrote the book The History of Creation and placed the start of humanity in several places, one being Lemuria and who was also known as the Darwin of Germany as he discovered thousands of new species and coined many terms in biology. Now, in 2013, there was an article by CNN titled Lost Continent Found Under Indian Ocean, which, get this, was even published in National Geographic. This happened because they found traces of a mineral called zircon that was 3 billion years old on a 2 million year old island, which meant that the mineral they discovered came from a much older landmass that sunk in the Indian Ocean. They theorized that fragments of it could have been here conveniently placed in one of the hypothesized areas of Lemuria. Now this is where it gets weird. The Tamil people of India believe that the ancestors of humanity came from a lost continent in the Indian Ocean, which they called Kumari Kandam, the cradle of civilization as according to their ancient texts. Now in part two, I'll show the evidence for Lemuria being in the Pacific Ocean. What? The first thing I immediately thought of was the moon map. If you haven't seen the moon map video, go check that out. But that all it talks about is the first photograph. Imagine the moon being the first photograph ever took. And they show you the original continents when Earth was first created. So it shows a lot of underwater continents. And this could this be one of them? It doesn't make sense for the lemurs to be on life rafts. And that's how y'all could tell us. Come on, man. They was on the ground walking. This is a whole continent that was underwater. This is my first time hearing about it. World missing an eighth continent. During the mid 1800s, biologists were puzzled when they found similar flora and fauna in both India and Madagascar. This brought many questions considering that these two places weren't connected at all. Furthermore, the evidence they found were specific to these two countries and weren't found in any of the surrounding countries. Later studies by a man named Ernst Hackel showed that a three billion year old mineral called zircon was also found on these countries that were only two million years old, indicating that the mineral must have come from a sunken landmass in the Indian Ocean. Thus, the lost continent of Lemuria was born. Well. This is still a hypothesis, but if we look at ancient Tamil history, it is written that their ancestors came from a place called Kamari Kadam, which on ancient maps was conveniently located where the hypothesized Lemuria is. So, asking AI to show us Lemuria.
That was tight. I like that. They did a little movie out of those AI printed images. I enjoyed that. They had the music to go with it. I don't know if I can get away with it, but we'll see. Uh, through oh, so they saying Lumeria is outside the wall now. Are you? That's not lining up. I don't think it's under the wall, uh, on the other side of the wall, you know, so I don't know how much validity those maps have, you know, but it definitely lines up where they said they found those minerals and those lemurs. This is the secret history of America. As children, we were taught that the Spaniards came over and found an indigenous and savage people. But what the history books don't tell you is that there was an advanced civilization here already. Early archaeologists were dumbfounded when they found hundreds of giant-sized mummies in burial mounds. These discoveries led a British prospector named J.C. Brown to travel to a place called Mount Shasta in California. He found a cave at the base of the mountain that spiraled 11 miles into the earth. And it was there that he found an ancient underground city. Inside, he found gold and silver and giant colossal weapons but there was no people anywhere. And it was only on his way out that he found thousands of mummies buried inside another cave. He brought back one of the skeletons and wanted to share this news with the world. So he put together a team of scientists and miners to go back into the cave. But on the day of the departure, J.C. Brown was murdered in his tent. One witness said they had seen a tall and hairy bipedal creature leaving his tent that night. The team was disbanded, and the location of the entrance to the cave was forever unknown. Later, explorers trying to find this ancient city would describe strange experiences with tall people that they met in the wilderness. Now, most of Mount Shasta is privately owned, and if you go onto these properties, you're escorted away from the mountain. Though we've now discovered hundreds of giant mummies, scientists believe that they're all fake. But even today, people still search for these ancient and advanced lost cities. Have you ever five signs that you've had a past life in Lemuria? You may be drawn to sustainable living and slow living because on Lemuria they knew that Earth was going to provide, but you had to work in tandem with Earth, not against it. You may not be the biggest fan of technology and prefer more natural, organic ways of living and being. You may enjoy music and sound and vibration a lot because Lemurians, they loved light language and could speak the universal language of love. You feel in your bones that New Earth can exist because you lived in a time where New Earth did exist and heaven was here on Earth, so to speak. We were in the 5D, so everything surrounding the idea of New Earth feels magical to you. Because Lemuria was a matriarchal society, you know how to be in divine flow and let go and let Hey TikTok, let's journey back in time to the mystical land of Lemuria. Lemuria, also known as Mu I see uh Lemuria is also in the context of uh some magical land as well. I see. Let's see if they got any bangers for Lumeria. How about that? Can we get a banger for Lumeria? Today is the longest history, history of black, black Americans. Americans. I'm, I'm talking, talking not, not only about, about the blacks that are here, here nor the real, real grand, grand, but through our entire. entire America contest north and south. It started, it started for me when I traveled, when I traveled to, to Mexico, Mexico about 11, 11 years, years ago. ago. And I and went, I to, went a to a place called Tres de Polches, or, or the Three Shoes, which, which is on, on the Atlantic, Atlantic coast of Mexico. Mexico. And, and there, there I saw, saw in a museum, museum this magnificent sculpture of a stone head 
nine feet tall, weighs 40 tons. Magnificently done of obviously a black African portrayed in a kind of a helmet or a crown. I learned that there were about 18 or 19 of these which were found all along the coast of Mexico and that they were all reliably dated to 1,200 years before Christ. In other words, 3,200 years ago. They belonged to a civilization called the Olmecs. That's according to the literature of the black experience here. Why do you need the word Negro? That's a word that means the blacks live in south of the Sahara Desert in Africa. And these are not Negroes. But here again, you remember the black Madonna? Mm -hmm. And the Madonna and Child, which you see here, that's the strictly old man. Out of the Veracruz state region in Mexico. So, an old man is the mother civilization of all of the Americas. Now, from the, the four comes a change, and then the four four who we take it back to the heart and to real creation story. So you know that America, the name America is a indigenous word, a Mayan word meaning paradise. Great head. I thought, well, this couldn't possibly, possibly be a black American, but it, it looks like it. Then I investigated the others. I saw the others. They also portrayed different black Americans, some with full features, some with thinner ones, different, different individuals. And yet the archaeologists tell us that no, there was no one over here from either Africa or Europe or Asia before Columbus. That is what I was told when I went to school. And it's what the archaeologists and what the establishment teachers still tell people, that there was no contact between the Americas and the ancient world before Columbus. I found that beyond this collection of these great stone heads that belong to this Olmec civilization, that there was a lot more. Legend of Lemuria, part two. So there's a couple different theories on how everything went down, but I'm going to choose what resonated with me. So I'm going to cover the antediluvian conflict between Elanians and Lemurians and its role in the Third Galactic War. First off, antediluvian means before the biblical flood. So this is a perceived world map of Atlantis and Mu, which is also Lemuria, Mu just meaning Mother Earth. Atlantis, Lemuria. The conflict between these two higher civilizations caused great damage to not only Mother Earth, but it negatively affected all habitability throughout the solar system. It led to the death of Mars, and is probably considered the most disastrous war in all of the universe's history. The lemurian elanian War was caused by a conflict of interest over lesser beings in the solar system. The Elanians wanted to dominate them and so-called guide them to their salvation, while Lemurians believed they should be left alone to evolve at their own pace. Lemurians taught oneness. Elanians started ego. Three. The con concept. Now, I'm not saying there's no validity out there on the planets, outside in the solar system. You know, I just strongly believe we can't go past the Van Allen belt. That's all I'm saying. You know, I'm not saying there's no validity on what might have happened. And, you know, it's something might be there. All right. OK, something might be there. Okay, <laughs> something might be there. Just keep your head on the swivel, and this is for entertainment purposes only, man. Don't come for me. That's all I'm saying, man. Of Mu I Lemuria originates from writings of the 19th century particularly from Augusta. I see Lumeria's out there, okay? Lumeria is out there, y'all. <laughs> what I mean out there is out there. As far as it being a continent underwater, that's where I'm at, okay? That's it. It was just a continent that got uh, washed away, you know, and it's a lot of, it's, it's underwater. 
That's where I'm at so far. Everything else is entertainment purposes only. One that we know of today is actually in America. I know. That's it's hard for me to wrap my head around this one, too. But did you know that there's more pyramids in North America than there are in Egypt? Which is odd, because you would think that if the Egyptians were from modern-day Egypt, there should be more pyramids there, not over here. But how did they get over here in the first place? Also, look at our dollar bill. It literally has a pyramid on the back of it. And that That's why the pyramid is on the dollar to marry. Look it up. Listening to the hour of the time. I'm William Cooper. We're going to be talking tonight about what we found on our trip to the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. Driving across the desert of Nevada, approaching from the Boulder City Highway, looming off in the distance is an incredible sight. If you did not absolutely know, we're listening to the hour of the time. I'm William Cooper. We're going to be talking tonight about what we found on our trip to the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. Driving across the desert of Nevada, approaching from the Boulder City Highway, looming off in the distance is an incredible sight. If you did not absolutely know where you were at, you would tend to believe that you were delirious and had somehow been transported to the desert of Egypt. Rising up above the city of Las Vegas is a black reflecting huge pyramid easily as big as the great pyramid of Cheops in Egypt on the top of this pyramid is a crystal capstone or what appears or looks like crystal capstone reflecting the sunlight in every direction if you've ever looked at a polished piece of black obsidian volcanic glass that might give you some idea of what the surface of this pyramid looks like as you travel closer along the highway, you begin to see looming up in front of the pyramid an exact replica of the Sphinx. And in front of the Sphinx, towering approximately 150 feet in the air, the Phallus of Osiris, an obelisk for those of you who have not followed our series on the mysteries. And if you don't know what an obelisk is, I'm sure you're acquainted with the Washington Monument. The site is absolutely awe-inspiring. The sheer size of this structure is overwhelming. It covers an area so large that driving around it, one begins to wonder how in the world this could have ever been built, much less built in the short period of time that it was, in fact, assembled. During the time that the Luxor Hotel was under construction, a huge fence surrounded the area. They had armed guards on patrol. No one was allowed to watch the construction or see what was going on, except that part which loomed above the fence. No visitors were allowed to watch the construction, and no press was given access. When we first drove to the Luxor, went around this huge, tremendous complex upon which this hotel sits, and then finally went across the street, parked the car, put our press passes on the front of our garments, got out with our video cameras, I looked directly across the street and was confronted with the head of Tutankhamun, who then promptly winked at me. Everything about this ninth wonder of the world, for it truly is, I can assure you, leaves one with a sense of awe, a sense of disbelief, overwhelming beauty. It is, in fact, beautiful beyond description. What I'm trying to do here is convey to you what I saw and there are not words enough to do it. Now if you've listened to our series on Mystery Babylon you know that the Egyptian pyramids were never tombs. They were not burial places or crypts for the bodies of kings or queens or anyone else. They were temples, great temples of the mystery religion and they functioned for the purpose of initiation. I can assure you that the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas is a temple of initiation for the masses, the millions upon millions of people who visit that city each year. Probably billions. 
not just from America, but primarily from America, but also from around the world. For every single bit of symbolism connected with the mysteries is built into this hotel, beginning with the obelisk, which represents the generative force, the sphinx, which is to remind mankind that he is, after all, only an animal, you can think, and therefore is always engaged in this constant battle between the animal and the intellect, and then the great temple of initiation, the pyramid, this one with capstone intact, crystalline in nature, representing as the sun reflects and glints off of every faceted side of it, representing the all-seeing eye. To give you some idea of the size of this structure, inside the building on the ground floor, nine Boeing 747s would fit comfortably with no crowding and no problem. Nine Boeing 747, and those are the huge passenger jets. Nine. Inside the building there is an obelisk which begins at the lowest floor, which is below the ground floor actually. Begins on the lowest floor, comes up through the casino, onto the upper deck, and points directly at the center apex, the zenith of the pyramid, is another obelisk. It is an incredible sight. And he broke it down on that last episode, man. Um, yeah, man, I, I'm all for, I think, Egyptian, you know, the ancient artifacts and everything is cool, man. But uh, I think salvation is even better, you know, and I believe that is possible through his son. Um, Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, hit that like and subscribe button if you made it all the way through this video. This was a long one. I'm trying to pump these longer ones out. Um. The algorithm seems to like it. So hit that like and subscribe button to help support your boy. And um, yeah, I got some exciting stuff coming. I got some exciting announcements coming. Um, you guys are going to love this. I'm um, just working hard, man. I'm doing chopping these videos up, trying to maintain it and still working on this project for you guys. So it's going to be huge. You're going to love it. And I just want to thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Have a good one. Peace and God bless.